Scenes from Mullins Field, the Garrison Headquarters Command Battalion staged a 10th anniversary Murphy Challenge. The challenge, which features a rotating series of runs, pull-ups, push-ups, and squats, started as a memorial to Medal of Honor recipient Lieutenant Michael Murphy, a Navy SEAL who died while serving in Afghanistan in 2005. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, highlights from this month's Town Hall. A Fort Meade firefighter receives an award and a look at the Armed Forces Retirement Home. These stories and more, but first, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin made a recent visit to Fort Meade. He arrived by helicopter, landing on McLaughlin Parade Field, and was met by National Security Agency Director General Paul Nakasone, Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Michael Sapp, and Command Sergeant Major Andre Welch. The SecDef spent part of his visit at the Baltimore Recruiting Station meeting with new recruits. In his remarks, he talked about the 50th anniversary of the all-volunteer force. Fifty years ago this week, the United States stopped drafting citizens into service and turned instead to an all-volunteer force. And ever since then, Americans like you have joined our military out of conviction and not out of compulsion. Now, shifting over to an all-volunteer force was a pretty bold step. No other military with such formidable capabilities had operated on a volunteer basis. But the whole world has seen the results. Secretary Austin concluded his remarks by swearing in 85 new members of the all-volunteer force. In other news, at this month's town hall, Garrison Commander Colonel Michael Sapp was joined by representatives from Corvius Military Housing, the Directorate of Public Works, and Kimbrough Ambulatory Care Center. The panel fielded a variety of questions, both live and online. You can view the entire Q&A anytime on our Facebook page. Meanwhile, the Colonel used the forum to highlight two big events coming up. On a national night out is a chance for the community to engage with emergency responders, uh, the first responders to... Uh, to talk to firefighters, the police, um, EMTs, really this is about the first responders and uh, building some of the community trust and bonds that we have. Corvius is providing us the space because we'll be using two of the community centers, but I want to highlight 5 October. It's a little ways out, but I, wanna, I will plant the seed several times. We're going to try something new. Uh, we're calling it the Community Information Expo. Uh, we, d we discussed whether this is a back-to-school night. I didn't like back-to-school because I don't want it to just be about families with children. I don't want that view. It is, Community Info Expo is kind of like the Coon Hall speech. If you have a reason to ever come inside this fence line, then you have a reason to come here so you can be informed on what is available in our community. Once again, you can watch the town hall in its entirety on our Facebook page. Elsewhere, each year, VFW posts across the country recognize outstanding emergency medical technicians, law enforcement personnel, and firefighters. Local VFW Post 304 recognized Fort Meade's Fire Prevention Chief, John Trotman, as Firefighter of the Year for Post 304 and Maryland District 6. Chief Trotman has been awarded our uh, Firefighter of the Year for VFW Post 304 and District 6 and he made second in, in VFW state competition for the firefighters. So it's, it's a fantastic uh, achievement. We're very, Thank very you. proud to honor you. Greatly appreciate it. In other news, every enlisted service member has 50 cents taken out of every paycheck to support the Armed Forces Retirement Home. The home has campuses in Gulfport, Mississippi and one less than 40 miles away in Washington, D.C. The home started out life as the old soldier's home and has evolved to serve enlisted members in all services. The Declassified Podcast team interviewed AFRH's Public Affairs Director Karen Novievieski for an upcoming podcast episode. Novievieski talked about eligibility requirements, medical requirements, and financial considerations. She says it's a process, but if you're interested, you shouldn't wait. Where we will lose time on, on these applications coming in is they will come in partial. Right. So they'll, they'll send in this, this, and this, but we still need this, 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 and this. Yep. So then we're working with them, who they need to go to, where they get this information. We work with that applicant very closely. Another point she wanted to make is that AFRH is a retirement community where you can age in place versus a regular nursing home. We are an all-inclusive um, retirement community, and that's the other thing too. It's not a nursing home. This is a retirement community. You can catch the entire conversation on a future episode of our podcast, Fort Meade Declassified. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.